Convocation is now in session. As Chancellor, it is my pleasure to welcome you to our 311th Convocation. Before we proceed with the ceremony, I would like to call upon Professor Emerita Margaret Kello to present Western University's land acknowledgement. Congratulations to all of our students and a warm Western welcome to all the families and friends celebrating with us today. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge that our beautiful Western campus is situated on the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Lenape, and Attawandaran peoples, who have long-standing relationships to the land and region of southwestern Ontario and the city of London. The local First Nations communities of this area include Chippewas of the Thames First Nation, Oneida Nation of the Thames, and Muncie, Delaware Nation. In the region, there are 11 nation communities and a growing indigenous urban population. Western values the significant historical and contemporary contributions of local and regional First Nations and all of the original peoples of Turtle Island that we call North America. Miigwech. To all our graduates, first let me say congratulations. You've worked hard to achieve this. Graduation represents a major milestone in your lives. At Convocation, we assemble as a university community to celebrate and recognize your achievements at Western and to wish you every success for the future. Your learning days are far from over. Learning is a lifelong process. Western has not provided you with answers to all questions. At most, we hope that what stays with you is a way of thinking objectively, approaching problems with an open mind, and a healthy respect for new ideas, all tempered with compassion and empathy for the human condition. You are forever a cherished member of this great university, founded 140 years ago. We welcome you into the Western family. Again, congratulations to each and every one of you. Today, we also confer an honorary degree upon Nora Offrider, an acknowledgement of her accomplishments, a successful corporate consultant who has been a trailblazer for women in Canadian business and a staunch supporter of women's advancement in the corporate world. One of Western's most prominent and active alumni of the Ivy Business School, she embodies the qualities of leadership that Ivy strives to promote, namely vision, community mindedness, and global awareness. To present our distinguished con candidate, I now call upon Acting Dean Mark van der Den Bosch, Ivy Business School. Nora Offrider. It is truly a pleasure to introduce today's honorary degree nominee, Nora Offrider. Nora is a trailblazer, a global leader, and an extraordinary alumna. Nora was a senior partner and director of McKinsey & Company, where she worked for 27 years until her retirement in 2014. And she sat in your chair in 1981, when she too graduated from Ivy's HBA program. Throughout her career, Nora has set the bar high. She was the first woman in McKinsey's Canadian practice to be elected as principal and as director. She was among the first women in the firm, globally, to be elected as a director. Nora led the firm's initiatives to advance women, chairing McKinsey's Women Directors Group, and sitting on the steering committee of McKinsey's North American Women's Initiative. In 2011, Nora was named one of Canada's most powerful women by the Women's Executive Network. Over the course of her career at McKinsey, Nora worked in Canada, the United States, and across the globe. She held a number of impressive roles and led the firm's consumer digital and omni-channel services, as well as served on the Global Personnel Committee, 
the group responsible for electing partners of the firm. Nora is an accomplished author and thought leader. With her work on marketing and branding appearing in the Harvard Business Review, the McKinsey Quarterly, the Ivy Business Journal, the Globe and Mail, Advertising Age, and the Journal of Market Focused Management. In addition to her commitment to business excellence, Nora does a remarkable amount for her community. She is an active member of the Board of Directors of St. Michael's Hospital in downtown Toronto and has served as the chair of St. Michael's Research and Education Committee. Nora is a member of the board of Our Shared Purpose, a 2017 integration of three major Toronto hospitals, including St. Michael's Hospital, St. Joseph's Health Centre Toronto, and Providence Healthcare. She also serves on a number of other boards. Like our newest alumni sitting in this room today, Nora knows Ivy's case method well. She credits her Ivy education for giving her the confidence and capacity to complete her MBA at Harvard and launch her outstanding business career. Nora has said, I am still a strong believer in the practicality of the case method. Ivy's classroom experience helped me develop my leadership skills and my ability to defend my point of view in real-time debate. Nora's strong belief in the Ivy experience is reflected in her engagement with the school. She has been a member of the Ivy Advisory Board, or IAB, since 2009. In 2014, she sat on the IAB MBA Task Force, and in 2016, Nora contributed to the IAB Teaching and Program Innovation Task Force. She has also returned to Ivy as a speaker and competition judge. Nora is invested in the future of the school, and in addition to donating her time, she has pledged more than $100,000 to the school, which has supported the Ivy Building Fund and Ivy's most critical needs. In 2016, Nora received an Ivy Distinguished Service Award in recognition of her extraordinary contribution to both of both time and talent to Ivy. Certainly, her remarkable career can serve as, as an inspiration for you. She embodies the mission of the Ivy Business School. Nora is a business leader who thinks globally, acts strategically, and contributes to the many societies within, she, with, within which she lives and works. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Vice Chancellor and in the name of the Senate, I ask you to confer the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa, upon Nora Offreiter. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. Congratulations, Dr. Offreiter. On behalf of all assembled here today, I should now like to invite our newest alumna, Dr. Nora Offreiter, to address convocation. Thank you for the generous introduction. Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, Dean, faculty, friends, family, and most importantly, graduates, good morning and congratulations to the graduates. Uh, your parents and your professors will be very proud. I remember a couple of years ago when my son graduated from the HBA program and how important a, a celebration it really is and how proud we are. So uh, you should feel very proud of your accomplishments over the last couple of years. It is such a privilege to be here today uh, and a real honor because um, I never expected to, uh, to be recognized such as this. And I'm particularly in, um, grateful because everyone in my family actually happens to be a doctor. And so finally, I get to be Dr. Alfreider. <laughs> so today is, is all around celebrating our graduates. 
And my role really is to share some thoughts that I hope will provide some insights to you uh, for your future career. Now I recognize I graduated from the HBA in the dark ages. Uh, you know, digital disruption didn't exist. Uh, geopolitics was much simpler. Uh, and the Amazon was just a river in South America. <laughs> so the world is a very different place. And the critical skills you've developed and the leadership you've developed over the last couple of years will serve you terrifically well. But I also recognize that you're going to need much greater flexibility, ingenuity, innovation, and luck than I did, because the world is much more complicated. So what I thought I'd do is talk to you today about luck. Why luck? Because when you ask successful leaders, what was it that drove their success? You'll hear typically three things. Hard work, focus and commitment, and luck in some form or another. Good fortune shone down on me. I was in the right place at the right time. But it's luck. So how do you become lucky? I know when I was in the HBA, no one would have picked me as being most likely to succeed in my class. In fact, I remember about three or four years out asking my marketing professor uh, from the HBA, Terry Deutscher, to write me a letter of recommendation uh, to go to Harvard. And I will admit he expressed some surprise that I was the one out of the 150 graduates asking for a recommendation to Harvard. So I tried not to take that too personally. <laughs> but, you know, you can ask, why am I standing here today? Well, there's a lot of reasons, but one of them is wh what I would say I made my own luck. And so what I'd like to do today is talk to you about how to make your own luck. And for me, that means really three things. It means purpose, people, and I'll come back to each of these, and paying it forward. And that combination created enough magic for me uh, to make the career that I have and the life that I have. So if I talk about purpose, many people in convocation speeches, uh, I made the mistake of listening to Steve Jobs <laughs> and was totally intimidated when I, when I heard his convocation speech. He'll talk about passion or vision of yourself out in 20 years. I'm going to be much more practical than that. I'm talking about purpose, clarifying the purpose of what are you trying to do over the next few years and why is it important to you. And the reason that's important is because certainly in the first few years of your career, you're going to be presented with a tremendous amount of different opportunities. And how are you going to make choices, the right choices for you? If you're going to make your own luck, you need to know what you're trying to do so you can choose the things that are right for you and however you want to define success. Since my retirement, uh, I have joined the McKinsey Learning Faculty, so a couple of times a year I go and I coach leadership in great places like Singapore and Kidsville. And we spend five days with consultants that are maybe three or four years older than you are. And we, we help them increase their self-awareness through reflection and experiential learning. And by the end of those five days, we get them to commit to a purpose. And the most successful consultants that I've seen are ones that have a great clarity of purpose. What are they trying to do, and why are they trying to do it? And I would encourage, encourage you to do the same as you start your journey. As I look back on my career, there were probably six or seven pivot points that fundamentally changed my trajectory. And a lot of those arose from you know, some decisions I made that didn't seem that important at the time. And yet, they changed the course of my career and my life. So for example, when I was graduating from the HBA, my purpose was twofold. Build international experience and do it quickly. I was impatient. And I made three decisions. Uh, the first was to join Bank of America Canada, rather than the Royal Bank, where I'd worked for the, uh, the past couple of summers. And the reason I did that was because they were the largest international bank in the world. And they offered me a job as a corporate lending officer that no Canadian bank would give me without an MBA. The second decision I made was to join uh, the rep office of the US bank and to lobby to get the same level of uh, training and experience that my US colleagues uh, would get in LA and New York, rather than my Canadian colleagues uh, 
with uh, Canadian training. And then I made a, the third decision I made was to go to New York after about 12 months uh, when my uh, boss offered me uh, a three-month opportunity to go and restructure Pemex, Mexico's national oil company. And the reason he gave me that job was because he knew what my purpose was. He knew what my interest was, and he trusted me to do a good job. Now, if I had had a different purpose, I don't think I would have necessarily looked for those opportunities or made those decisions. And so I think it's incredibly important for you to know what you are trying to do and to reflect on it, however you define it. These career experiences completely changed my trajectory. They gave me the story that got me into Harvard. They ultimately made me choose to leave the bank. Uh, and they were opportunities that were presented in the first two and a half years of my career. On people, again, I never would have had the opportunity to go to New York if my boss hadn't trusted in me and understood what I was trying to do and cared enough to create that opportunity. So he took a risk because he cared about me and he knew. And you know, the lesson in that that I want you to take away is that if there are three or four or five people who are trying to help you on your career, rather than trying to do it on your own, you'll be much more likely to make your own luck. I know that uh, I've worked with many CEOs over the years, and the most successful ones are those that spend an awful lot of time trying to find a great team they can surround themselves with, that they trust, that they know are focused on helping that CEO be successful. And I would urge you to look for your people and to find those mentors and sponsors who are going to help you succeed and take risks so that you can indeed make your own luck. So how do you go about and build a, a, a team of supporters? I think there are three things you can do. I would urge you to start at work and, and, and try to build your own brand of credibility and reliability. And how do you do that? By bringing your best self to work every day and doing the best job you can at every task that's being given to you, no matter how small. The second thing is to find your people. After you've been at work a little while, you're going to find some people that you respect more, that you feel more comfortable with. And go to them and share your purpose. Explain what you're trying to do. Ask them how they succeeded in their career. Some, not all, but some will offer to help you and mentor you. And those are the ones where if you uh, have the nerve to build the relationship, they will continue to support you for many years to come. But first, you have to take the courage and, and, and ask for their help and advice. I know when I was a uh, junior, I, I was terrified of talking to senior people. I always thought they were going to be too busy to bother with me. And I would urge you not to be afraid, because it's actually a compliment. Everyone loves to get advice. Everyone loves to be asked about their perspective. And it's a joy, not a burden. And the last point I would want to emphasize is this is not a one-time activity. It, when you find mentors, Stay in touch with them uh, and, and keep them abreast of what you're up to. I know that over th a 30-year career, I have a whole network of folks that I still go to for advice, and I've known many of them for more than two or three decades. The importance of people at work is not nearly or is equally important to the, having the support of people at home. You're going to have to work hard in your career. And being transparent about your purpose and, and garnering the support of your family is equally important as building that uh, credibility and support at work. Indra Nuri, the CEO of Pepsi, she is quite adamant about the most important decision you make in life is who your life partner is. And I can tell you, as uh, for my own personal career, I could not have been successful if my husband, who was an who had an equally demanding international career as a technology executive, if he hadn't been an absolute 50% partner on our family and all our household obligations. I couldn't have succeeded without him. And he says, even though he had that huge career and those obligations, he had to make 50% of his time available, uh, not 50%, but do his 50% of, of helping our, 
uh, with the chores and obligations of the family. That made him a better father because he had to create the time for the family. So I think there's a lesson out there for you, be ye women or men, in terms of trying to pursue a career. And again, having that support group and having that transparency of people who are out there to help you and take a risk is as important at home and at work if you're going to be able to make your own luck. Because it's much easier to have folks around you than to do it alone. The third theme is really paying it forward. And what I mean by that is that if you make your own luck, many others will be invested to help you. And you will benefit a lot from doing the same. I spend quite a bit of time now paying it forward. Uh, I'm on a, several nonprofit boards. I've already mentioned I, I coach McKinsey folks, and I spend a lot of time helping tech entrepreneurs. And you may think this is all one way. It's not. I get as much as I give. It makes me an effective leader. It teaches me more about who I am and what my interests are. It helps me refine my purpose. And it has built for me a network of folks with similar purpose that I never would have met otherwise in my day-to-day -day job. And those uh, advisors or sponsors that I have met in the nonprofit world have helped me launch my third career as a corporate director. So you may say, that's fine for a retired old lady. You're going to be too busy. And I would uh, urge you to reflect on that. You may be surprised. I'm very proud of the fact that all three of uh, our kids who are young adults with a diverse set of interest in environment, business, and healthcare have all found the time to lend their expertise to others. And I think that kind of time spent, again, you, you get as much as you give, and it has helped them learn more about who they are and refine their purpose. So again, I think if you are going to make your own luck, being clear around the purpose, having people to help you, and paying it forward is really a magical combination that certainly helped me make my own luck. And I'd urge you to reflect on in the next few months as you start your careers to ask yourself three questions. What is it that you're really trying to do over the next couple of years? Do you have clarity of purpose? Who are the people you've got out there who are going to help and support you and give you advice so that you can make your own luck? And what are you doing or where can you pay it forward? So thank you very much and best of luck. Thank you, Nora, for your insightful address uh, with the very, very practical advice for our graduating students. You have been a trailblazer for women in Canadian business and a strong supporter and proponent of women's advancement in the corporate world. As an honoree of Canada's most powerful women, your career is an example and inspiration to us all at Ivy at Western. Graduating students, HBA class of 2018, I want to share something very special about our honored guest with you. She has an organic relationship with HBA. About a year and a half ago, when I had the pleasure of inviting her to receive an honorary degree from Western at another convocation, uh, she uh, paused. Of course, she was uh, delighted to accept our invitation, and she said, can I have it with the HBA class. Well, uh, last year's HBA class was taken up because of another similar request, so here she is. So, HBA class of 2018, distinguished guest, please join me in congratulating Western's newest honorary Doctor of Laws, Dr. Nora Offreiter. I take pleasure in asking the Vice Chancellor to present to convocation our newly appointed Professor Emeritus. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. The designation of Professor Emeritus is an honorary title which recognizes long and distinguished academic service. Will Professor Roderick White please step forward?
Professor White is an associate professor in the general management area of the Ivy Business School. He received his HBA like you from Western some time ago <laughs> as a gold medalist and went on to earn his MBA with high distinction and doctoral degrees from Harvard University. Rod joined the Ivy Business School as a faculty member in 1979 and has taught in all of Ivy's degree programs. He has served in leadership roles with Ivy, most recently as Associate Dean, Faculty Development and Research for Ivy. And he has also served as Faculty Director of the school's undergraduates and doctoral programs. Rod has authored and co-authored numerous articles in leading practitioner and academic outlets, including the Harvard Business Review, the Strategic Management Journal, and the Academy of Management Review. Notably, one article won the Academy of Management Review's prestigious Decade Award, the most highly cited article over a 10-year period. Mr. Chancellor, may I present to you Professor Emeritus Roderick White. Will the candidates for degrees, diplomas, and certificates please rise? Mr. Chancellor, I'm very much honored to present to you the candidates who have successfully completed their academic programs at Western. I ask you to admit them to the degrees and diplomas and certificates for which they have been recommended by the Senate of our university. Under the authority vested in me by the Senate, you will be admitted to the degrees, diplomas, and certificates as shall be announced by the public orators. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. Will the candidates please be seated? Mr. Chancellor, graduating students, colleagues, distinguished guests, convocation is the single most important time of celebration in the life of the university. Today, we honor those graduating students who through determination, hard work, and intelligence have met the demanding standards of a Western degree. Today is also a proud day for all of us associated with Western, including our Board of Governors and Senate, our faculty, our staff, and our friends in the community. It is wonderful to see so many members of our community of learning who have taken the time to join us to celebrate this important day in the lives of our graduates and the university. To those parents, whose young adult children are graduating today. Let me say that I personally share your joy as we join your ranks of being Western parents as our own son graduates today at this convocation. So I, I know how proud I feel, and I encourage you to feel as proud as we do for the success of your children who are graduating today. Returning to our graduates, today those of you crossing this stage join a special group known as Western Alumni that numbers more than 293,000 alumni living in 150 different countries in the world. We are pleased to have Mr. Gary West with us here today representing our Alumni Association and I'd ask him to please stand and be recognized. Western's Board of Governors is charged with responsibility for the overall governance of this institution. Today we have with us Mr. Kit Gibbons, representing our Board of Governors, and I'd ask him to please stand and be recognized. <laughs> I'd also like to thank and acknowledge and thank the parents, spouses, partners, children, relatives, and friends of our graduates who are here today. This celebration would not have been possible without your loving support. 
Now I ask our graduating class to rise once again, turn around, face your family and friends, and give them a warm round of applause for supporting your journey. Now let me congratulate once again the remarkable students who graduate today with Western degrees. Today you become partners in outstanding academic achievements of the University of Western Ontario. My warmest wishes to each and every one of you. We will now proceed with the granting of the degrees, diplomas and certificates. Before we do so, I have two special requests for those of you in the audience. First. As a courtesy to all graduates and their families, please hold your applause and any other special expressions of joy <laughs> until the public auditors uh, indicate when such applause is appropriate. This will ensure that each graduate's name will be heard. So let me elaborate and describe how the process is going to unfold. We're going to grant degrees to three graduates at a time. And the public auditors will be calling three names almost back to back. With your cooperation, we hope that we'll be able to hear their names clearly because each graduate is very special to us. So this is a large class. It is a single class. So what public auditors will do is pause in between after a certain number of students have crossed the platform to give us ample opportunity to express our joys. So please join us then. Second, we know that photographs are important for our graduates, their family and friends. As you heard before this ceremony began, that we are pleased to provide each graduate with a photograph of this special occasion. Therefore, we ask you to remain in your seats throughout the ceremony. Of course, feel free to take photographs from there. I now call on the public auditors to introduce the candidates for degrees. Mr. Chancellor, the following are candidates from the Richard Ivey School of Business for the degree Bachelor of Arts, Honours Business Administration. Parnia Abu Talebi, Rishika Agarwal, Tolu Aibana. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll cue you when to applaud. <laughs> if we don't cue you, just wait for it.
Sam Alciberi, Michael Gerard Allen, Isabella Ann. Trisha Noel Rees Armina, Muiz Ashik Ali, Shubham Aswal. Georgia Anastasia Anastasiu. Josephine Au, Yara Avitsur. Connor Maxwell Barr, Jehan Darius Batewalia, Sahil Batra. Matthew Joseph Bazo, Marielle Angela Belanger, Nicolette Beneraj. Alana Beres, Jory Mitchell Bragger. Austin Vincent Blades. Matthew Daniel Bogarach. Joshua Samuel Bloom, Voyan Boscovich. Carl Botha, Laura Boyd, Alexander Brown. Dominique Bruns, Matthew Kunwu Boo, Andrew James Robert Callahan. Tara Noel Caravaggio, Calvin. Caracciolo, Sydney Molly Kaminitsky. Nadia Shabshu, Hiroshi Chakma, Guldeep Chakrabarti. Joey Chan, Spencer.
Spencer Chan, Vincent Chan. Kevin Kai Wen Chow, Thomas Foster Chapman, Fei Tong Chen, Michael. Jiahi Chen, Zen Ni Chen, Jason Jinwei Chung. Priscilla Michaela Chung, Su Young Cho, Bernice Hugh Young Chow. Harrison Hoi Leung Chow, Thompson Lee Clark, Andrew Clinton. Adam Cohen, Abigail Mary Koholik, Juliana Coleman. James Collins, Robert Turland Calhoun, Sai Chen Dai. Afroza Damji, Albert Damsi, Sarah Kathleen Dorizio. Chris Davidge, Adrian Davies, Bryn Helen Kutnich Davies. Vershank Desai, Rachel. Demena Sanvir Dhanju Noah Arne Jerfelt Jordan Dlohi and Helen. Dong. Julian Mohammed Donovan, Greg Dossett, Ifitayo Adetoro de Sunmo. Megan Doyle, Dane D'Souza, Vebhav Chetan Doshi. Uh, 
Alex Yang Du, Stacy Elman, Andre Inash. Matthew Erdman, Kate Elizabeth Ernwine, Damien River Ewing. Samuel Jordan Factor, Andrea Nicole Fairweather, Hui Feng. <laughs> he Chan Feng, Lisha Fei, Andrew Fen. Mia Filippini, Maria Fitzpatrick, Megan Fluelling. Noah Solomon Fogel, John Elliot Foley, Robert Friend. Robert Fung, Cassidy Alexa Ray Ishmael, Lauren Ruby Rose Yulani. Habib Ali Jaffer, Mohammed Hussein Jahad Motla, Anuj Akshay Jain, <laughs> Natasha Jain, Nikolai Julian Jakob. David Yaskolka. Jinghang Alice G, Jing Jiang, and Elizabeth Johnson. Brady Christian Johnson, Muhammad Yoma, Baljod Singh Kaloti. Demetrios Evangelos Kalupas, Zain Ahmad Kalsi, and Werimo Kamau. Derek 
Kang, Eric Kang, Amil Kenji. Ishan Kapoor, Alexander Athanasios Karayanopoulos, Anchita Kashik, Brett James Keller, Jerry Kelly, Mohammed Ryan Kair Alexander Kermak Kair Ashton King Christina Elaine Cloet This has been a long group, so maybe we can now uh, give them an applause for the group that's passed. Kendall Cosella, Monte Singh Coley, Christina Theodora Kotsiomaitis. You wait until you see them do it, because I said the two. Okay. I thought I did. Don't worry about it. Okay. Go back. Okay. Natalie Kovalchuk, Martin Brandon Kusera, Rohan Kuma. Jeffrey Ben Kung, Serena Rose Kung, Valentin Kuznetskov. Nikki Tsing Kwan. Joseph Alexander Laferriere, Shaquille Lakani. Tenzing Kendon Lama, Joseph Shrike Lau, Nicole Emily Lawson, Nicole Emily Lawson. Zachary Oliver Lechner Sung, Darian Philip Lee, Spencer Yao Chung Lee. Zichai Zita Lee. Isaac Joseph Irving Lego, Nyan Cheng Lei. Janelle Young, Simon Terence Young, 
Nathan Gong Lee. Serena Lee, Shinri Lee, David Yao Ye Lee. Yuen Lee, Yushin Lee, Samuel Linetsky. Dylan Reed Littman, Andrew Little, Hope Zhuang Liu. Ziyu Liu, Annika Lui, Jiyue Luo. Edward Stafford Lusted, Chan Young Ma, Jake Joseph McDonald. Miguel, and Magistrano. Miguel, 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 Andy Mack, Zach James Maloney, Olivia Dina Manarin. <laughs> Amelia Ruth Martin, Duncan Alexander McRae, Nicholas Robin Meta. Matthew Thomas Meister, Fan Chi Meng, Daniel Mester. Shuo Mi, Bianca Natalie Miele. Peter Mark Edward Milazzo. Angela Rose Mills. Jenny G. Min. Cece Midziolik. Danielle Malotny, Alexander Stewart Morris, Lee Humphreys Morrison.
David Ryan Morrison, Logan Victoria Morwick Miller, Mikel Moscarelli. Adam Ashif Mutani, Chelsea Muchantif, Deindra Lynn Gagnon. Let's give this group a round of applause. <laughs> Lucy Gan, Amy Garfinkel. Aman Garg. Michael Claude Gauthier, Rowan Gowry. Barrett Robert Larkin Geisler. Connor Brian Giles. Victoria Lynn Gillies. Curtis Giomi. Rachel Lynn Gladwish, Kent Godino, Taylor Goodfield. Scott Goodman, Skyler Gordon, Max Goisman. Yenika Marie Gratmans, Dylan Ivan Gray, Andrew Francis Greco. Guzzle Cor Graywell, Sydney Grice, Cole Grossinger. Thomas Ronald Haley, Mike Hall, Jayu Han. Shretin Hao, Kevin, Kevin Singh Heyer, Colleen Heyman. Alicia Hare, Amy He, Jalen He.
Jiyu He, Andrew Hechenova, Mark Heaney. Daniel Jonah Henketarno, Daniel Curtis Hicks, Amanda Ho, Cynthia Ho, Kira Hoff. Jacob Alexander Holub. Matthew Chihim Hon, Amor Hoodboy, Emily Elizabeth Ann Horrocks. Julia Hu, Ji Jun Hu, Jasmine Huang, Jason Huang, Jennifer Huang. Mackenzie Adam Hung. Oh, yeah, okay. Good. Okay. You keep me. Okay. Thank you. Eden Yiching Ip, John Luke Ip, Mohib Iktadar. Asan Irfan, Heath Daniel Irvine. Megan Moulton. Am I writing any more? Okay. Yeah. Haley Blair Moses. Mahati Mundluru. Harsh Nayak. Unso Namkung, Irma Judy Natal, Justin Ng. Palace Ji Ying Nai. Giorgio Michael Nicastro, Yudong New. Matthew Frederick Norlus, Carter Caleb Nord, Hyejin Sophia O. Oh.
Derek Ong, Greg Darren Orelowitz, Zach Overy, Shazad Pagdawala, Eliz Tiana Elizabeth Palumbo, Yvonne Pan, Kelsey Panister, Curtis Parcels, Nicola Parenta, Simran Parmar, James Michael Parrott, Emily Ariana Parsons. Neil Patel, Vikram Patil, Jordan Robert Patkus, Cameron Joseph Patterson, Jialu Peng, Joseph Perta. Slava Yub Pesic, Brian Ankwak Pham, Peter Lawrence Philp. Caitlin Elizabeth Pitblado, Kasim Alam Pirani, Spencer Michael Prashad. Daniel Ari Pitajnik, Gursimran Raina, Nikhil Narain Raizada. Mira Raja, Kinjal Rajawat, Jake Freeman Rennie. Alexander Rice Hoyt, Renee Marie Jacqueline Richardson, John Kia Martin Richtiger. Joshua Ross Rosenblatt, Michael Rossi, Adam Greg Rostowski.
Abdul Rahman Saad, Pablo Jose Sajgalik, Cheyenne Sadei. Omar Wael Samur, Garrett Jonathan Satosik, Michael Saunders. Kyle Shell. Timothy Joseph Schiappa, Ethan Alexander Schneeweiss. Andrew John Schneider, Monica Schneider, Matthew David Schierko. Ladies and gentlemen, as we've all noticed, this is a big group, and I'm sensing some pent-up enthusiasm. So why don't we applaud the grads? Sorana Antonia Seligian, Michelle Don Shepherd Sempowski, Emre Ethan Supiensi. Alafia Shabir, Daniel Ethan Shade Silver. Kurosh Shedai. Vishal Sharma, Hanlu Sheng, Kaspar Shazada. Jack Shi, Peter Shi, Hui Shi, Yung Shi Si, Kevin Silberberg, Parker Wrightson Simon. Marcus Eli Philip Simons, Elena Ruxanda Inculet Simpson, Joshua Daniel Simpson. Prabhnur Singh, Agamjit Sivia, Basil Smith. (laughs) 
Harry Lionel Solomon, Maxwell Irving Solomons, Jordan Sufyan. David Victor Kenneth Spear, Mahir Srivastava, Connor Stanton. Ryan Stasiak, Ryan David Stern, Stephanie Isabel Steers. Victoria Marie Stopper, Alexander James Stretton, Paige Strong. Ziqing Su, Jingying Sui. Ajit Prasad Sukumar. Gordon Sun, Abdullah Suleiman, Samuel Taman. Xin Yue Tan. Xin Yue Tan, Justin Tang. Nelson Jeff Bing Tang. Greer Daniela Tanza, David Alexander Tasker, Christian Taylor, Azar Tajani, Monogria Takawal. Labros Tadashi Tataros Wade Timchuk Wahagen Tanakania Adam Bong Sung Benedict Sue, Joshua Graham Underwood, Cassandra Ling Vella. Cole James Vincent, Ridhi Vora, Della Wong. <laughs> Jia Xin Wang, Alexander James Watson, Zi Hui Wei.
Joshua Daniel Weissing, gold medalist. Avery Catherine Tobin Weichop. Michael Paul Dominic Weir. Mary Jo Whitfield, Jonathan Wong, Matthew Simon Wong. Tony Yanjie Wu, Alex Wu, Qi Ting Xia, Yue Wu. Amy Xu, Gloria Xu. Jia Jing Xu, Brother Zi Chu Xu. Shiming Yan Chao Chi Yang Tommy Hong Tao Yang Wang Chiao Yang. Yun Wei Yang. Jia Ying Carrie Yao. Mary Rong Yao. Valentine Yaskovich, Colin Yao, Valerie Janet Yao. Lane. Alistair Yanamisu, Ashley Wenqing Yu, Justin Yu. That's all. Oh, yeah, there are more. Yeah, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Zhuo Wei Yu, Tyson Kanis Zara. Rangdi Zhang. Wei Yu Zhang, Wen Zhang, Jessica Zhang. Zi Ye Zhang, Shuang Zheng, Xiao Tong Zheng.
Xiao Wen, Zhen, Yin Fei, Zhen, Royce, Zhou. Vili Tianyang Zhou, Xin Zhou, Siren Zhou. Yi Xin Zhu, Morgan Zhuo. Xiao Yu Zhuo Saham Zemo Xin Tong Zong In the name of the Senate, I grant to the Registrar the authority to confer degrees, diplomas, and certificates to those candidates whose names appear in the official program but who are not present today. At this time, I invite Mr. Gary West, representing our Alumni Association, to say a few words. Thank you. Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, Vice Chancellor, Dr. Nora Aufreiter, distinguished faculty and guests, and most importantly, fellow graduates of Western University. Congratulations and welcome to Western's Alumni Association, as well as the Ivy Alumni Association. You have worked very hard to complete your studies, and today you move from being students to becoming members of the Alumni Association of our great institution. For those of you earning graduate or second degrees, a repeated welcome. As stated earlier, you're joining over 293,000 graduates in more than 150 countries, which are very purple and proud of Western, our facilities, our affiliated colleges, and our undergraduate and postgraduate programs. As your Western experience, which we feel is the best in Canada, continues as alumni, we are united by fond memories of our time here, and particularly of the knowledge and friendships acquired. Your alum, Alumni Association is dedicated to fostering and preser preserving these important bonds through the many programs, services, and networking opportunities that are offered directly and both at the annual homecoming weekend and through local chapter events. Our vision is to share a lifelong commitment, pride, and passion for our great university. Always remember, you are an ambassador of Western be proud of Western, and in so doing, you will be benefiting both you and Western. Now I invite you to bring your guests to a reception hosted by the Alumni Association in your honor in the Mustang Lounge at the University Community Center immediately following this convocation. There you can collect your 2018 class pin, enjoy some refreshments, and learn more about the extraordinary opportunities available to you as Western alumni. Best wishes for the future, and remember, wherever life takes you, Western will always be home. Thank you.
Before closing convocation, I wish to express my appreciation to all who have contributed to the success of the day. In particular, and on your behalf as well, I want to thank the University of Western Ontario Convocation Brass for their magnificent performance and their director, Professor James Mackay. May I request that the audience remain at their seats while the academic procession leaves the hall. Convocation is now adjourned. <laughs>